Welcome. I'm Ravi Tangri, and I'm here with some friends from the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers and a couple of other speakers and consultants who are graciously giving of their time to help you uh, find out exactly how to use and leverage breakouts and polling and other things to make your meetings a whole lot more effective. What we're going to do is walk through this. You're going to see it from the facilitator point of view, from my view, and from the participants' view. And what we're doing also is actually creating breakouts where the participants, the, the other speakers and consultants, are going to be discussing how to use breakouts, how to engage people more. So those ideas will be brought into this as well. So let's jump in. We're going to start off. I'm going to show you how to create a, uh, uh, how to get into the meeting, how to create a poll, how to uh, allow people in through the waiting room. Really important now with security to make sure that you use the password and the waiting room. Uh, and also, if you are having a fairly open meeting, you want to restrict the ability of your participants to share desktop because one of the things that has happened in the past is Zoom bombing. So it's, you need to use these security precautions. Then uh, we will, uh, I, I'll do a couple of things to, to break the ice. We will uh, announce the two rooms and I'll show you how people can move into the rooms. You can also move people randomly into breakout groups. That's incredibly easy. I'm going to show you how I can do it to put them into specific rooms and allow them to choose where they go. If you know what open space meetings are, this platform is perfect for this. Uh, I work with a lot of companies where they've replaced their meetings with open space meetings, which is instead of walking in with an agenda, your staff creates the agenda. Sounds scary, but how many people have been in meetings where you wonder, why the heck am I here? Daily? Hello? Uh, well, what open space does, it allows your participants to call meetings on issues that are relevant to them, and they go to those sub-meetings that are most important. And then everyone can learn from all of the meetings, some of the key points, so that everyone is in the loop. Uh, if you're interested in this, you can Google Open Space. It's open source uh, technology, uh, or feel free to reach out. It's something that works incredibly well to engage your people. Once we've uh, done that, uh, we'll, I'll show you how you go in and out of the breakout rooms from the participants' point of view, from the facilitators' point of view, and how you call them back in, we'll share some of the learnings, and then at the end of the video, I'll tag on uh, some of the video from the breakout room, so you can actually see some of the more detailed discussion that went on during that time. Okay, ready to roll? Let's jump into this. All right, so I have the Zoom meeting previously scheduled. I'm the one who scheduled it. So all I have to do is go to my uh, Zoom app and just click Start, and we'll go right in. I am uh, going to um, create uh, the breakout rooms now. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want to do a manual assignment uh, on of two rooms. I'm going to call one uh, how and where to use breakouts, and the other is on. Um, I'm just clicking the rename button here. How to increase engagement in Zoom meetings. Okay, so these are now ready for me to assign uh, everyone to when people appear. I'm also going to create a poll. Um, and so I am creating a question. Um, 
uh, Zoom level. How are you feeling about Zoom today? Are you um, bring it on? What do I click? Another one. I'm a zombie. And the another one will say, what's a zoom? OK, so. We are going to save that. And that's uh, so that is now ready to go. And I've got it here. OK, so whenever I want it, it's now available. OK, there are now some people in the waiting room, so I'm going to open up and let them in. So you can just do that by following the lead or... Uh, I see the live thumbs up. Uh, it says, Joyce says, if you take a look at the bottom, you see the reactions, you can actually see applause or thumbs. So you can use that. And if you go in at another time, not now, into your um, Zoom uh, ops, you can actually change the skin tone of the hands to uh, oh, really yes i did not know that <laughs> so see there's mine it's a little it's more oh, closer to me uh, <laughs> where's how do you do that oh i'll learn that don't one. worry about that now <laughs> you can explore that uh and the other thing i'm going to ask you just to kick things off is we're going to start off a poll just since this is all about zoom so you should all be getting a poll right now um, so just put in your answer about right now, how are you feeling about Zoom? No. <laughs> oh, this is very interesting. Okay. Everyone in. And we are just gonna end the polling and I'll share the results. This must be a bunch of speakers because most of you are saying still bring it on. We've only got a couple of zombies here. <laughs> and uh, so this is great. So just another quick thing I'd like to take you through. If you haven't yet used it at the bottom of your screen, you can see if you click the participants button, you will open a little screen on the right hand side of your window and there you have a bunch of buttons that you can hit. There is a hand that you can put up, which would alert me. So everyone try putting up their hand. There's a blue hand there. And that, if you're in a larger session, it flags the, uh, the host so that they can do that and the host can clear them all like that. So if you understand that, click the yes button. Yeah, see? And so you can very quickly ask if people are on speed, if you can also show them how to use the go slower, go faster. So if you are really go, actually, you know, the heads are spinning, you, they might put up the go slower and you see a bunch of those and you, you'll know to change your pace. And, and the same, the go faster, that will let you know that people are actually getting it, you can move forward. So you can check in with those, all right? So, for the people who would like to explore um, how and where to, so the two are number one, specifically on breakouts, how and where to use breakouts, so different ideas, and you're gonna have about 15 minutes, okay? The second is how to increase engagement in Zoom meetings overall. You need to pick one. You'll be able to get the key points from each. Everyone who would like to be in the how and where to use breakouts, could you raise your hand, please, the blue hand? What is the second one? The second one is about how to increase engagement. So people aren't getting bored. So people, you know, it's, you're actually keeping involvement. Mm -hmm. So the, what I'm seeing for the, um, for the how and where to use breakouts are Russ and 
Roshan, uh, or, or it's actually it's not, uh, Meg. I don't know how my screen name changed, but it's actually Kindy. I think he borrowed my. It screen. is Kindy. That's I know, and yeah. and Colleen. Is that correct? Anyone else want to be in the specific room about breakouts? Nope. Okay. So now the rest of you, uh, I'm going to get you to put up your hand so that I can assign you to the how to increase engagement. Uh, so that we have, it makes it very easy to click that. So your job in these breakout rooms is to come up with specific ideas on this that what I'd like to do you to do when you come back is to give me the, you know, don't, let's not go through the whole 15 minutes of notes, but top three points, top three ideas you came out. Okay. So pick someone who will present back when we come back the top three ideas so we can record that here. Okay. It's now 11 minutes after it'll go for 15 minutes. Make sense. So I am going to invite you now into your breakout rooms. You just have to click the button to say, to go in there. So now everybody has gone into their breakout rooms. As host, I can now go in and I can explore, um, uh, see what they're doing, just as if I was doing an actual workshop and they were in breakout rooms down a hall. I can now go in and just listen in, answer questions, and see where they're at. So I will do that right now with... Um, Change this window. So, so I'm now, I just brought up, just click on the breakout rooms icon, which if it's a full window like this, it's there. If it's a smaller window and you've got the participants on the side, it would be under more. So I'm going to jump in first to the, the first breakout room, how and where to use breakouts. And I'm going to go and see what's happening there. Hi, Ravi. Hi, yeah. Hi there. Hi. This is really cool. The room separates off, and it's only the few of you. Yeah, sorry, Rav, we have ten, 10 minutes for this? You have an, uh, about another 12 minutes. Okay. Great. So okay. you have time to get into a little bit of meat. All right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Bye-bye. So if you've got a full day training for sure... Um, Yay. Okay, so everyone's okay. You got about ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we're flying yeah. along here. Yeah. yeah, we're we're learning things <laughs> like no other, Robbie. Google, <laughs> Google Docs is also a way. I think you can share Google Docs. Um, I think the facilitator can give you a Google Doc to work off in the groups, which can be a way of engagement. Yeah. Coming up on two minutes left, so I'm now going to go send them a message. I click on the breakout rooms and at the bottom, send a message to all. I'm gonna write two minutes left. Uh, please use a spokesperson and uh, identify the top three points you share your let's call it ideas you want to share with the whole group. Now I'm going to wait until now it's two minutes are left approximately. And so now I'm going to send this uh, broadcast out. Now I just wait until uh, the time is up and then I will go back in and close the rooms. So some people are starting to come back now. I'm going to go in and I'm going to, it's just coming up. One group has come back uh, by themselves. Welcome back. 
folks. We've just got a minute left, so I'm just going to give uh, the other group that moment, and then um, I'm going to close the breakout rooms to invite them back. So you guys had the option to come back and uh, just about there. This is one thing I like better than live facilitation because you tell the groups to come back and there's always a group that lags behind. Here, I close the rooms when it's time. Like, there, done. All breakout rooms will close in one minute, so they have one minute. Uh, they've been given 60 seconds and then they can come back. So. Let's start off with the group, the first group that was focusing on how and where you could use Zoom meetings. Uh, what are some of the best ideas that you came up with? Whoever is a spokesperson for that, can you, uh, can you please uh, uh, unmute yourself and uh, share with us what? Uh, one of the how reasons would be when, obviously everybody's got a certain pain threshold about how long they can stay in the meeting for. So a breakout is a nice way to keep everybody engaged so that they're taken out of lengthy, lengthy having to just sit and listen. Um, the topic themes that were discussed in terms of what could be done in a breakout session, there were examples of to create um, like case studies. In one particular case, an example was given for maybe like customer service training to give a scenario around a customer service scenario and then the participants in the breakout group could come together and explore and come up with solutions to the case study. You could use it obviously in, in anything that you're putting together where you're wanting um, more ideas to come up with, where um, maybe like an icebreaker game that it's used for, uh, depending on however many breakout rooms you want to use. Thank you. And uh, with our wonderful memory group, that was in the how do you engage people? Yeah, what were so, some of those key ideas there? So, so I'm, I was nominated, but feel free to jump in if I've missed something that you felt was important. So um, one, one point was just that you really have to pre-plan for uh, opportunities to give you and your participants some movement, chance to get up and move around and, and do things. Um, and also pre-planning those things like using the polls and the Q&A and um, the, the raise hand things. And really, it's, it's got to be every five to ten minutes mm -hmm. through a program. So that, it, that frequency is planned right in there. Yeah. Um, the second thing would be how important it is to focus on the camera, not on your participants on the screen. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about engagement with the audience, that if you're looking right into the camera, that's how you're going to get engagement, not looking even down a little bit at their faces. Um, third thing I had was, in general, you need to think of a webinar different in terms of engagement than a Zoom meeting, where the meeting, the, the participants have the opportunity for much more different types of feedback, whereas a webinar, it's more restrictive. And you need to think about even maybe like pre-planning some things so that they do some pre-work before a webinar. And, and then you can bring that into the conversation where you don't have the options to get back to people. And then the last just little point I'll throw in there is that the whiteboard disappears when you come out of the breakout room. <laughs> so, excellent so point. If yeah. I missed anything, <laughs> let me know. Okay, that's yeah, there awesome. Is, there is a note, a note. You can take oh, yeah. notes. And <laughs> Right, so we, on the, the menu bar at the top where you can annotate, so if you're taking notes on the screen through the whiteboard or a Google Docs, um, you can give the participants the option to go in through that annotate and put a stamp so that allows them to vote on certain points, you know, if you're trying to narrow it down from 10 to 3 or something like that, so, which is Excellent. a good tool. You know, for 15 minutes, that's pretty darn good, folks. Uh, oh, yes, Suzanne. Oh. The only, the only thing I would add is, um, is something, a combination of what we've observed and what um, Jeff said, is really setting this up properly because uh, 
even knowing where the annotation was took us a long time for some of us to figure out. Knowing that you can see everybody's face, letting people know how to expand uh, so that you can see everyone's face, taking, making sure the whiteboard, you take a picture of it or something. Like these are the things that will, I feel will give you success or failure yeah. if the expectations are not set up front. And um, to your point, just for the recording, Ravi, is knowing that we have two minutes uh, because, yeah, we were chatting and then we lost it, but knowing that we have those two minutes so that the facilitator in breakout can really summarize what was covered and get gain agreement. Yeah. So again, structure is going to be really important to make this work. Exactly. Uh, um, Jeff, think, you had a... Sure, yeah. I, I'm, one other thing, we were talking about the eye contact with the camera. Um, and in a Zoom meeting, there's a lot of controls to run. So it seems like sitting down uh, works okay, providing you really focus on the camera. Um, Anders Boulanger had, had mentioned in his webinar about engagement, about webinar engagement, was he stands for webinars, and because he's standing back further, you can't see that his eyes aren't looking directly at the camera, and you don't totally. have as many controls, but when you're standing, it, it seems more engaging than a talking head. Yes. So with a webinar, I think it makes more sense to stand. Uh, in a meeting, though, be close, but make sure you're looking at the camera. And and from a speaker perspective, just to let you guys know, I've got, uh, you know, I'm obviously at my desk here and it's actually a standing desk so I can raise it up and do that. But I also live stream from my studio over there. So I, I, I like to do that, but then I have to have, I either have a second monitor right by the camera. So I'm looking at people that I'm talking to, or I have to be looking down at my computer a little bit just to bring uh, the tech on and so on if, if you don't have the support on for that. But you're right, the distance. And if we're speakers, I'd really encourage if you've got a studio to start exploring how you can use the studio to live stream and stand and speak. Um, I think the other thing I want to say too, because I, I presented last week to 200 professionals and I know they actually had the control. So therefore this control person had to let go of the control. And we did a test run three days before. And I know we've already talked about that, but I think that that needs to be recorded that the absolute, it must be tested prior. And so it worked out really well because some people are just learning as they go too. So, you know, it, it, everything went really smoothly. I hear you, Jeff, because I had to stare at that green dot. All I kept thinking about was somebody's on the other side with a cup of coffee in their PJs. And so I just try to make it fun for myself. Like they say, everybody's in their underwear. So I just, but I, that energy level was a really big deal for sure to keep yeah. it up. Yeah. So. I did a couple, no, two weeks ago. And most of them, even though I highly encouraged them to turn on their cameras, a lot of them had their cameras off. And I found that as a speaker really tough because you can't necessarily see their engagement, you can't hear it. So I was almost overly animated when I was talking to the audience because I just felt that was it was it was the only thing that would work and and then I'd bring them back into it so I knew what what they were doing. But it was uh, it's a tough, you've lost three senses when you go virtual. Yeah, it's a learning curve. So what we're discussing is um, how and why we would use a breakout room. How and where. How and where. How yeah. and where. In a Zoom environment. So I don't know the how. I don't know quite how he did that. <laughs> yeah, I think you have to do it from if you're the host. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, to do a breakout room. Okay. So he must have gone into the settings somewhere. Um, what, what are we supposed to try and find the how right now? Yeah, so I'm not not exactly sure because I, th that's oh here he is. I'm sure. Hi, hi, hi yeah. Ravi. Hi there. Hi. This is really cool. The room separates off, and it's only the few of you. How did that get set up? That's just what uh, the how the breakout rooms works. It's just like sending people at a workshop off to this room or that room. Okay. Right. And so you're the only one that can send us to breakout the breakout room, right? Right. So if you decide this is not the right room for you to be in, you can just you will have a button in there that says leave room, uh, and you come oh. back to the lobby and tell me I would like to go to another room. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Okay. Right. So you guys are focused on ideas on how and where you can use breakouts, right? And and Kindi, you're recording. I'm recording. Yeah. 
-hmm. Okay. okay. So, so you're coming up with different ways that you could use breakouts. Okay. So right. you said how, on how to use breakouts. Can you explain that a little bit more? Because we're all sort of right. going, well, is it how, like, not how to set Not technically up. how to, but how to integrate it into what you do. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't really understand that question. Right. Okay. So, yeah. for example, if you're giving a keynote, rather than speaking for 45 minutes, maybe you break it into three 15-minute chunks mm. and then have breakout rooms to apply the concept from that first Okay. Part. Yeah. Mm. All right. And so that's what you're asking us to brainstorm about and how we would bring it back to the group. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good. And we, sorry, Rev, we have 10, 10 minutes for this? You have an, uh, about another 12 minutes. Okay. Great. Okay. So you have time to get into a little bit of meat. All right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Bye-bye. So if you've got a full day training for sure, um, you don't want people on a screen all day. That's, no. That's an example of somewhere where you could have a breakout. And in my case, what happens is there are a lot of very practical tools that I apply when I'm teaching. Um, and those practical tools require audio as well as mm -hmm. participation. Like that's sort of an interactive process. Yeah. So I'd be curious to know whether this would allow audio to be played through it. And if it does, this would be a superb way of having a smaller group of people doing something practical. Absolutely. And uh, I think um, what I've found is, especially if you're doing a session, well, I speak on, around re resilience and balance, and people are more apt to share their thoughts and ideas if they're not in front of an enormous group. So yeah. it would lend itself to be mm, having an opportunity for people to be inspired to share their thoughts. Mm. And I like the size of the screen of four, as this has turned out to be. Mm -hmm. So I'd be very curious to know how many breakout groups we could actually break the whole audience up into yep that's a good question you can, uh, you can break it out into as many as you want i believe because okay i've seen as many as six or seven in a few of the sessions i've been on so far oh really yeah. okay yeah. okay uh, yeah. yep go ahead especially, and then especially when you have some of those like like we we're doing here we're doing an element of brainstorming so i often tend to have um groups of people coming together under a certain theme so that they can brainstorm that particular theme. So that's another way how this breakout, breakout could be used. So when you say a theme, like for example, example, a topic, like if, if my, if my workshop is actually on emotional health, mm -hmm. I might ask people to volunteer to break out into the theme of jealousy or okay. anger ah. or competition yep. or judgment. So you know, each of those would have separate groups of people that are coming together. Yeah, that's so an excellent any theme idea. topic that's a subsect of our own teaching work yeah. could work yeah. really well like this. And so you would say, okay, for those of you who who were jealousy might resonate or that you have experiences around that, um, put your hand up or uh, because yeah, well, met, pair, pair up. So I would get okay. people to group up mm -hmm. in triads and or more. Mm -hmm. um, and then they work together on the question I then pose them. Yeah. So that what would be another interesting thing is, is if the question can show up or if the organizer can share their screen at this point with the question or the exercise that they're being asked to do. Yeah. So that, that's a question that I have. So if you have a breakout, because normally as a facilitator, if you're doing a session, you would be at the front of the room. People would That's be right. in different sections because I don't, I've never divided a room and had people leave the room. I'm always yeah. in the room yeah. and keeping the energy going and making sure everyone's engaged and not on their yeah. phone. So how that's a question that I have for Ravi is how can I ensure as the host of the meeting that do, do, am I supposed to assign a person in charge of that group? When Unless you, have you them keep popping back like he just did. He came yeah. out from the other breakout to us. I guess you're trusting as, as competent adults that someone would take it on, take the lead. Usually there's a natural leader. What are your thoughts on that? I well, find that you could always ask, ask one of them to take the role of a leader as oh. long as they've been briefed with whatever it is that they're ask, being asked to do. Okay, so you could ask, if you send them off into the breakout room and then you say, I, I'm entrusting one of you to take the helm here exactly. and to lead it. Okay, yeah. and then it flows naturally. 
Right, or you, or you could just do a simple exercise like, you, you know, if you're doing a live one, you might say everybody pick your can and point to the leader at your table and they take the role. So here you could do it in the chat room because our chat room now just has the four of us. So if we hit chat yes, and you go everyone, that's just for the four of us. So we could, yeah. we could go right now because we need to pick a person to present to the group when we get back, right? Oh, yes, so, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so, so then... So we could type you? in who we think should be the leader right now. Okay, so let's type in. Candy. I don't know how to spell your name right there, oh, Candy, we, we, because we, you're we, under we, another person. This in, into the chat group. Oh, I see. Yeah. How do you spell your name? It's not Roshan you're saying. It's <laughs> it's spelt like it's just got spelt now. It's kind with an I on the end. Okay, no awesome. Idea. No, I did. See? My son changed the name of the screen yesterday. Oh, that's funny. Okay, well, so there you go. Look at that. Oh, wow. We're all in agreement that you're the coolest <laughs> leader today. You're a natural. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, that well. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Okay. Well, wouldn't these Zoom breakout meetings be the same as when we do group exercises when we're doing doing something like that? So, I mean, we could probably use them as some sort of icebreaker as well um, or case studies as well, correct? Case study. You mean if you gave them a question to work through or right. what do you mean? Okay. Yeah, if you gave them a scenario specific to the group you're training, mm -hmm. um, how would you handle this situation? So I'd speak on customer service and quite often I speak to municipalities. Okay. So I might pose the question, um, um, you, you have, a, you have a, a long term developer coming in to pull a permit to build something. He's in a cranky mood like he usually is and he's mm -hmm. in a in, in, a, in a rush and he doesn't understand why you guys can't just fill out the form for him. How will you um, calm him down and take care of this? Okay. So that might be one scenario and we say, okay, this group, you work on that case study. Yeah. And then you would ask them uh, when you say you've got, you give them the specific amount of time that they have to work on it. And then when they come back to the group, one, right. you say, be prepared to choose one of you to um, let us know. Your okay. Fine. Present. Yeah. Okay, very good. And give each of the different groups a different scenario to work on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't Colleen, know what, 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 do you, what do you speak on? I don't, I don't, Colleen Cole, I don't know, I'm not sure I'm familiar with you. Oh. Uh-oh, oh. Her mic, your mic's not on. Can't hear you. <laughs> Bottom left-hand corner is where the mic is. There, there you go. go. Sorry, I thought I had already unmuted it. <laughs> okay. So can you just tell me, I don't know, I don't know you, or where are you based and what do you speak on? I'm in Halifax. Okay. Uh-oh, you muted again. Yeah. I can't hear you. Sorry, okay. start again. All right. I dropped my computer this morning and cracked the corner of the screen, so I think I oh. have a problem. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Carrying a coffee probably, right? Ooh. Yeah, it slid off my lap when I was trying to hook it up. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. That's you know, the reason why my son had my machine yesterday. He put water on his and it's completely died. Oh, no. And now with, the, with this circumstance, I'm finding I'm moving room to room all the time. Yeah, it's tragic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, uh, that's something. And Colleen, what do you speak on? So I'm in Halifax and I speak on significance and meaning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've attended a few, uh, uh, a few of these types of uh, breakout rooms, um, some in large meetings and some with just like 10 people and we broke into two or one of them we played games, just kind of icebreaker and another one. So the leader flipped in and flipped out to check and see how we were doing. Mm -hmm. But um, at the larger ones, there was also a co-host who was the administrator. Yeah. And then oh, a co-host. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, and we could also leave one meeting that we were in once we had discussed what we wanted, and then we could go back and ask to go into and talk about that topic. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people were coming in and out of rooms, and it was actually kind of fun. <laughs> I see. Oh, because somebody would just pop on the screen. Yeah. yeah and that's so facilitated we, by the host then. When they go to the waiting area, then the host would bring them back. Oh, we just got a left. message from Ravi yeah. saying that we yeah. have two minutes left. Okay, so let, let's um, let's quantify what we came up with then. Um, that how and where to do a breakout room when you want them to discuss a particular topic, and then they create that intimacy that they might be more apt to share their thoughts. Yeah, and when they're going off to brainstorming something, yeah. you've given them to do. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, like now with what Colleen's just say to do something where there's an icebreaker game right. yeah. um, and, and to be mindful of the fact that the chat, chat box can also be used alongside for the smaller group. Right. Um, and then you've got the uh, idea that Russ came up with, which is about um, it could be a customer case study mm -hmm. and you're given a whole scenario and then people are asked to brainstorm or come up with solutions to that particular customer case study or whichever scenario you had presented them with. Yeah. Um, I added another one, which was about bandwidth, just in case there's some issues going on with bandwidth on the Zoom itself. I was going to ask the question, maybe putting people into breakout groups to discuss something, does that actually make the bandwidth problems less? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. The one question I would ask too, though, is what's everybody's pain threshold with Zoom? Because after about 90 minutes, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I, oh, yeah. I'm at break, it's tiring. You know, it's two tiring. hours maximum. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think these breakout rooms could be Benny, very beneficial to keep everybody engaged instead of just listening to you talk for three or four hours. Oh my gosh, Russ, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yes. To, to yeah. have an opportunity to speak because it is more tiring. It's not as engaging as you're listening to yeah. a live speaker. Right. right. And I'm yeah. on one this coming weekend for two full days. Oh, you mean you're doing one or you're partaking taking part in, in a two day taking part in a two day online workshop? Now that's going to be very very tough. And one of the reasons why Holy I'm doing it is, is to help them, right? <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. I suppose we ought to go back out. Should we now leave the meeting? Oh, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So bottom right. Okay. It says leave Let's right. Return to main session. Should we nominate our sender man to be our, our call that person to report? Oh, thanks, Joyce. Yeah, good, good, good call. I, that's good. I like that. Good um, yeah. Um, hey, um, um, I was wondering. Uh, does it does have a share of screen? So, um, Peter, are you aware that there is a whiteboard? If you want to record everything on a whiteboard, we can add to it. If, if you're interested in that, I don't know if, you, if anybody wants mm -hmm. to do that or not. The, the whiteboard, uh, in my experience, is not very easy to um, use. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well that's good because that's one reason why I'm here because I've never used the whiteboard and I was wondering if anybody had and, and if it works. So I it's, haven't used it. I think we should try to use it because I want to see what it does. Yeah. It's, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Let's go for it. Let's experiment. Yeah. Okay, let me go back here just a sec. We click, so Peter <clears throat> has to click whiteboard? Yeah, it's under share screen. Okay. Yep. But you really got to use your trackpad, right? Like you can't type. Oh, really? It's, I thought you no. could somewhere. It, no. it, it's very difficult. It's, it's writing, which makes it difficult with your trackpad to use. Just, I mean, definitely let's try it. That's what this is all about. Um, with that being said, anybody I've uh, talked to, and I've been following the remote speakers a lot, and I've tried it. It's, it's not easy. It's mm -hmm. yeah, especially if, if you have to write it. Yeah. Well, there you go. go. Like I can read that. Help. <laughs> help me. Help me. <laughs> yeah. Help me, Rhonda. <laughs> Peter, are there up top? It says view options. Do you have different options because you're sharing your screen? Like would it give you a text uh, option or something up there? You you get a, like a text box. So I can type into that. Yeah. So if you, if you guys want to start, I can just make it one big text box. Okay, whiteboard. You could use whiteboard for engagement. I, I'm not. Uh, no. I'm not seeing your screen, Peter. For some reason, I'm not sure why. No? Really? I'm seeing a screen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing a screen too. It's all I'm, white. So, wow, Peter, if you okay. if you put whiteboard, if you can figure it out, I. What I would like to just um, a limitation to this is I can't see anybody else, which in breakouts the idea is also to engage everybody and all of a sudden everybody's gone. I see you I can, on the I, side. Yeah, I, I see you. If, see you. if you go, if you go uh, in the view up and you go side by side, you see uh, me, it's in French, but you have view options yes, and you go side by side. Can you see nine people or six people? You I can move the screen. You can, you can adjust and see everybody you see, there's a line in the middle. Yeah, she's right. Yeah. So Hi. I can see one, I can see two, I can see four, I can see 
But do you have this line like this oh, that okay. you can move you. left yeah. and right? Got it. Thank you. Got it. We learned something. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> cool. Teamwork. No, I'm not getting it. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to be direct with you. I'm going to be part of that participation that goes, ah, uh, what are you talking about? So I've got six still showing up. You pull, so, you pull the black at the bottom, pull the, pull it down so that it expands. The window expands. Like shrink your screen, shrink your whiteboard screen, and then the rest of everyone will show, but you have to be in speaker view. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Ravi, Ravi, you're uh, muted. I have a, I have a, qu a question. Uh, we only have 15 minutes. Uh, w uh, I have been going into these uh, breakout sessions, and we love it. And one of the questions is, you, if you're going to give something, uh, like you, you're the master, you want people to look forward to go back to your session. Right. You know, because we just love the, the breakout sessions <laughs> so much that we don't want to go back into the, 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 the main. Uh, so then there's a great idea for the, you to use to ramp up engagement, to ramp up engagement, to come back to the main meeting. Yeah. So how okay. could you do that? I'm going to turn that right back on you. Mm -hmm. I'm a facilitator. What can I say? This, this is this is bizarre because I'm still all I'm seeing is gallery view. I'm not seeing uh, any shared screen. That uh, Peter, you're sharing your screen. Is that correct? Well, I did, and I did until Ravi came, and then he must have done something because my shared screen disappeared. Okay. Oh, okay. sorry. I just switched to speaker view. Uh, I didn't see. Well, uh, that's that's probably my fault, Peter, because I went to look into shared screen, and when I did that, that probably there, uh, there probably bumped is. yours out. So yeah. is it back? Yeah, it's back. It's back now. Sure, Jeff. blame it on the facilitator. Go ahead. <laughs> so, no, no, I'm taking the blame on that one. So, I still do not see it. I'm, I'm sorry to be such a uh, pain. Oh, oh, hang on. Never mind. Got it. Okay, never mind. Here we go. Yay. Yay. Okay, so everyone's okay. You got about 10 minutes? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're flying along here. Yeah, yeah we're, we're learning things <laughs> like no other, Robbie. Google, <laughs> Google Docs is also a way, I think you can share Google Docs. Um, mm -hmm. I think the facilitator can give you a Google Doc to work off in the groups, which can be a way of engagement. Yeah. Now, we're, not, the, we're not talking about um, breakout rooms per se. We're really talking about, yeah, but that, that's wrong. a great, great point. Yeah, okay. Just, but yep, then you can also ahead. bring that Google Doc into the bigger room, right? Um, so that you can work off of it and, and share insights so that, like for example, Peter's going to go back and share insights with um, the group, and the other group's going to share their insights. So there's certain questions that you can actually give as a facilitator, I believe, and put it in each of the breakout rooms so that it creates engagement. Yeah, and the other thing you can do <clears throat> if you're using Google Docs or um, in I think you can do it with the whiteboard as well. If you go up, see the menu bar at the top and there's, um, if you click on more and then you'll see a bunch of different options like text, draw, stamp, that kind of thing. Do you guys see that? Where? Under what? It might just be you, uh, Peter, because Try. it's your screen. Yeah, but I think if you go up under more. You mean more under participants or which more? Sure. Uh, up in the top menu bar to the right, it should say more dot 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 kind of. I'm not getting more. No. Are you looking for annotate? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh yeah, annotate. If you if you look under I your have, top. I have annotate. Oh, do you have? Oh, okay. That's how it's coming up. Okay, so press on that. Click on that. Oh. Ah. <laughs> so now, if you take your, if you click on where it says stamp. Stamp. Yeah. You can go in, I believe, on where I've shared my screen and put like a check mark on one of those points. Oh, cool. So you can ask people to vote on certain things. So if you have like four options, we could vote on what we think is the best. You could put your check mark where you think it's best. Mm. See, there I go. Okay, I didn't see that. I'm still looking for the uh, <coughs> Yeah, I can't under, find it under either. Under is that in the top menu bar for you, Jeff? Yeah, under anno annotate. When you go to annotate, then it uh, brings up all the menu. Yeah, yeah. Annotate. Text about. It's, and then uh, I don't know what that is in French. 
It's a finicky <laughs> one, though. It doesn't yeah. always use... Le annotate. <laughs> yeah, but is it in participant converse? So or? up top, Ellen, it, there's a screen. It says you are viewing Peter Chapman's screen. Mm -hmm. And oh. then you go to the right, is view it? options, yeah. drop down, mm -hmm. annotate en français. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, not the, it's, not the, it's the same. Our... It's the same word. Okay. Oh. 50,000 words are the same in English and in French. Oh. Yeah, it's actually, right. le annotate. Annotate. I'm I'm it. It. I'm oh, not great. Oh, this yeah. is awesome. Oh. <laughs> there. oh. <clears throat> so there you can. So it's a way to get people to do all this. Now, one thing I would say, you really have to think about engagement in a zoom meeting like this where we're all talking to each other and you have the more options but if you're using the webinar part of it the engagement amount is much less you like can't use really breakouts in the webinar right no no breakout rooms no. okay no. so if you have a group of less than 100 if you're in the pro plan you can you can do webinars so i mean yeah. you can do zoom meetings i should say yeah, it, it's a little cumbersome doing meetings. Um, I, you know, I just did my first one last week, and, and many of you helped me with that. Um, and um, it's uh, one thing that, that, that helps a lot, I found, is when you move them into breakout rooms. Now, this is maybe more under breakout rooms, but to set the timer on the breakout room um, so that they, they see it coming down. They don't waste too much time. Uh, so set the timer. I found that out after uh, the... The test meeting from Mike Kerr, and boy, it really helped a lot. Yeah, um, great point. Also, um, I'll say this: you know, great tip I got from Joyce was um, keep the uh, wrap-up instructions down to low, like uh, things for them to do, to go on next steps. It has to be so much simpler than what you get live. Um, no. You know, I I used to ask them to to send me a week from now, send me one tip that they learned, put a such and such a, a subject line, and it was you know, it, it created viewer fatigue, whereas it's just, nope, send me an email. Here's the email address and we're going to give you all these extra things. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I find I, I really had to simplify it. Otherwise I was going to lose. Something, um, something else that was being alluded to is the, you know, webinars, you still can engage in webinars that may be worthwhile for us to take a couple minutes just to think about how to do that because it is, you can't use breakouts. So does right. anybody have any ideas that you've used or seen used? Like, for example, I've seen, you know, ask, at least asking questions and getting people to respond in the chat or using the Q&A effectively um, can help engagement in a big way. Polls. I really enjoyed. I did, yeah. I did a keynote, like, like wasn't a huge one, but I, I just used polls, chat, and reactions. And, and I kind of kept it to every five to ten minutes. Of, of bringing the audience back in. I also did the Bollywood with a green screen, which was terrifying, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, movement works. I did a session with teachers and we did, we, we got up and we did some dancing too, different dancing. And it was just 30 minutes long, but just to have them move. And, and at the beginning, uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll have people go, I invite people to put up the gallery and then just go, okay, look at each other and wave. Yeah. And yeah, then just, definitely sit back and kind of do like a heart to heart connect because you know, we're we've all been guilty of like we're on zoom but we're we're messing around and so there is that need for connection so just helping people to connect in a different way like i can't reach out and hug you but i can look in the in the um camera and i can just like you know it's like i'm in your living room right i'm with I, you i so, think uh, joyce that 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 movement is a key one. And Anders Boulanger, he put on a whole session about staging webinars and his uh, approach is do webinars um, in a way that he does them standing and, and he does them as a webinar. And, it, mm. and it's way more speaker-ish engaged with the audience. I think it's much more engaging. However, I don't think standing works very well with uh, Zoom meetings because there's so much clicking and yeah. clicking out you have to do. So, um, um, one other thing that I, I found I had to do was I kept on staring at myself. So I, I put a sticker <laughs> across my face of my thumbnail with a no on it. And then I had another sticker behind the camera just so that I would start staring more at the camera. So we're looking at audience engagement. And if I'm looking at myself like this, yeah. I'm not engaging anybody. Yeah. If I'm looking straight at that little, little camera, it's, it makes a big difference, I think. <clears throat> 
to that point, Jeff, that like eye contact. So let's let's looking right into the camera because it is tempting to look at faces. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where I'm looking now, and then I'm looking at my camera, and you you really get a different sense when you are looking at the camera than when you're looking at each other's faces. This that's even more important in webinars. Yeah. Because in webinars, you really need to connect. Um, can you do me a favor, Peter? I don't want to lose this. Where that movement is, um, I'm not sure on everything you have there, but one of the things I, I'm hearing and I really, really like is movement intervals. So not only movement works, but intervals where you do have breaks. I know Derry does um, different creative breaks. Um, and I think Joyce, it sounds like you do as well, but having those movement intervals where people are actually doing something to get their energy. Something yeah. else I liked last night at the CAPS Toronto meeting, and again, this would be more for meetings, but uh, we're muted a lot. So how do you know people are interested? And I get the chat and all of that, and that's all well and good. But what is kind of fun too is, is using happy hands, is letting mm -hmm. people know that you're celebrating them. So that is movement as well as it lets people know that you agree and you're excited of what they're saying and it gets people doing things. And for me, that works well for my keynotes because I talk about la, 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 la. So <laughs> it, that kind of works as well. So that's an interesting way. And it's also uh, sign language for happy. Uh, right. I had one other one on the webinar, Suzanne, which I'm going to try next week is <clears throat> to give people some pre-work. So don't just leave it to within our a lot of time to to give them some certain things to work on think about before you get there so you can almost set it up so it's easier to get their input at the time mm -hmm. so i'm going to try that next week with That's a group great, great there's idea. also uh, in the webinars i've seen people more uh, trouble with uh, uh, you know the sound uh, 